next one that we'll be going through. So if you had that handout. I don't know about you, but even to being a therapist over two decades, I really don't like behavior charts. <laughs> uh, at least I didn't. And the reason I didn't is because sometimes they're harder to implement. Um, and over time, parents, when I give them, they'd stop using them anyway. And so, and, we're, and our focus became so much on behavior, we kind of lost sight of the whole belonging piece. But I was set out to be able to create a better behavior chart. And I think I have either achieved that or I'm getting close to it. So if you've ever been frustrated, you're not alone. Um, behavior charts can be very confusing. Sometimes you'll have parents, can they be so complicated that the parents can't figure out how to use them. Or it's just like one more thing I have to do in my day. I'm just so overwhelmed trying to remember to do this chart or follow this instruction or you know, give this gold star. And that becomes just too much on the parent. And really, for parents who are working with traumatized children, things really need to be kept simple. <laughs> right? You've got a lot on your mind. You're dealing with a lot of issues and struggles. So the simpler, the better. That's why we talk about the hip pocket tools. We want to keep things as simple as possible. So a behavior chart, if we're going to use it and be successful, then it's got to be simple. And you'll have kids who just simply say, I'm not going to do that chart. Right? So there's, there's that. But research does prove that behavior charts, they do work. That's why people continue to use them. They have an ability and a power to be very effective. They typically are more effective with securely attached children than insecurely attached children. But I think we found a way. Some of the tools that we've been talking about and we'll continue to talk about, we will look at. These are tools that anybody could use. Traditional or attachment-based parenting doesn't matter. But these are tools with some a little tweaking will work well with insecurely attached children or children who have been traumatized. So before we can really talk about a better behavior chart, we really have to talk about core values. Because really what we're trying to emphasize is not just behavior, we're trying to focus on values. And so values are clearly communicated rules about how a family member is to treat one another. And if the child would come from an abusive background, then the values that they had are going to be one of survival, of defense how to get what they want at the end of the day. And they never really learned the values that hold a family together. And we cannot expect or assume that they're just going to get it, that they're just going to understand, or because maybe we've told them once that they will know what our values are as a family. But really, we need to be reiterating these rules over and over and over again. Again, repetition <coughs> is a way of learning and getting the, the amygdala to calm down, getting the <coughs> emotional brain to calm down so that they can learn and process what these rules mean. So some rules for relationships in the family could be respect yourself and others. That's a good one, right? Everybody respects one another. Use your words, not your hands. You see, they heard that a lot, right? That we're trying to teach children not to hit one another. Try your best at everything. Mistakes are okay. okay. Honesty is the best policy, and we've already talked about clean up your mess. So. Take a moment to look over these core values and write down five values that either you've already articulated in your family, you already know you have, or you would like to start seeing more of. It could be like, we respect one another. We give each other privacy and space. So write down five tools, or not tools, excuse me, five core values that are important for your family.
Okay. So who could share one of the core values that you put down on your list? Honesty. Honesty. Yep, honesty is the best policy. We're honest in this family. Excellent. I love that one. What's another one? We always tell the kids to spend back for our part of success. Say it again. Spend back our part of success. Okay, excellent. Yeah, you can steal these. It's okay to steal other people's. Yeah, another one? All right, excellent. Mm -hmm. I love that. Good. Any others? Communication is crucial. Communication is crucial. Good. Yeah, I love that too. What else? Respect. Respect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I know from my own faith-based background. Uh, that we are really admonished to think about things that are true, that are lovely, that are right, that are noble, that are pure, and we're to do that day and night. We're supposed to constantly be meditating and thinking on these things. And the reason for doing that is because when we do that, it transforms our mind. It makes us to think in new ways and new habits. And so we want to be able to present these values before we try to do a behavior chart, because we want to focus on beliefs before we figure, start focusing on behavior. And so you want to reiterate, in our family, we communicate. In our family, we're honest. In our family, we use respect. And we continue to repeat those things over and over again. And after a while, you'll say, what's our values? And the kids will be able to say, oh, I know, honesty, respect, communication. It's like, exactly, I'm so glad you remembered that. <laughs> because you want to get those things Again, developed into their forebrain, get their locked down, be able to get them to thinking about stuff, have them have to develop a conscience, and just to be able to reflect on their own behavior and manage themselves well. Because when we go to do a behavior chart or any type of parenting role, again, we want to be able to hang that onto something. We want to be able to, why are we doing a behavior chart? The goal is what? Create more honesty or to create more respect or to demonstrate how to communicate more often or do it in an appropriate way. If we focus only on what we don't want to see happen, we're just going to increase those things. So if we say don't, don't hit, that only tells you what not to do. You need to find it, figure out what you do want to do. You want to plug in the values. So then we want to move, take those values after we repeat them. And I would suggest even you put them on a chart, let the kids decorate it, let them put the words on them themselves, have them come up with some ones that they have some ownership around, and then put them on a refrigerator or the wall or someplace where people can see them and you refer to them often. Then when we move to a behavior chart, we have a reason for why we're doing what we're doing. Now, the reason that my behavior chart is a better behavior chart <laughs> is that it's better because it's only gonna focus in on one problem at a time. Remember, it has to be simple. If you have to think of 10 different things the child needs to be doing, or you even know half a dozen things they need, right? I haven't done already. So, to think of more things, it's just going to be too overwhelming. So what you want to pick is what is one big, fat, juicy problem? What would be an example of one? What's a big, fat, juicy problem? Being honest. Being honest. Mm -hmm. That's the solution, but what was the problem? Lying. 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 Yeah, there you go. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, there's a reason I was switching it back around, um, because we want to get to that place of honesty, but that is the core value. What's another big, fat, juicy problem? The one that just drives you nuts. Disrespect. Disrespect. Okay. What else? Mess. Messes. Okay. A mess. Yeah. Anything else? I know things drive you nuts. Hitting and kicking. Hitting and kicking. Right. So these are the things that this drives me nuts. I, if I get rid of this problem, this problem, I would be happy. Life would be so much simpler. So what you want to do is start focusing on that one big juicy problem that you want to see decreased or eliminated from your home. Doesn't mean that you're not gonna, people don't have to brush their teeth. Doesn't mean that they can go to bed whenever they want to. Doesn't mean that they get to eat ice cream instead of vegetables for dinner. There's still gonna be other rules involved, but your main focus as far as the behavior chart goes is gonna be on this big juicy problem. So if we're gonna say don't hit, then that's gonna be what we're focusing on. The second reason this chart is better is because you're only going to reward, this is a really key piece, you're only going to reward other or opposite behavior that are incompatible to that big juicy problem. So what would be 
opposite of hitting? Hugging. Hugging. Good one. You're going to reward that. What else? Using words to express your feelings. Might be on our core values chart too. You're going to reward that. What else? Just about anything, right? Anything that's not hitting is something that's potentially a reward. So the, you've just now dramatically increased your success because you have a lot of things that you can reward that is not going to be hitting. So it's really hard to do, and one reason they call it incompatible or opposite is because it's hard to play ball and then hit your sister. Now you could take the ball and smack her with it. You know, there's that possibility too, but you have certain things that you can't do. You can't be sitting and playing Legos and hitting your sister. I mean, you can still get up and go hit her or throw something at her. I mean, there's still things you could do, but there's a lot of things that are incompatible with the behavior that you want to see stopped. The problem for us, because we are so overwhelmed working with the kids is that we tend to not reward when we should. And then we only are dealing with problems when they pop up. That actually reinforces the problem because now we're attending to a negative problem, negative attention to that problem. And the children begin to realize, well, if I write on the wall, I'll get attention. If I hit my sister, I'll get attention. If I um, steal something, I'll get attention. That's not always the motivation, but 80% of children, give or take, is going to be about attention getting. That's going to be what they want to get more than anything else. So, um, so for instance, if you have a child who's hitting, mm -hmm. and you're trying to do the opposite of that and work on that on your behavior chart, so now they're yelling. Okay, yeah. You don't reward yelling. <laughs> and I, that will come to our next piece, um, which is a really good question. But you are going to look for opportunities where they're not hitting. You still will have to have some ground rules. You can't yell. You can't punch a hole in the wall. You can't steal food. You can't lie. You can't do a lot of, be disrespectful, talk back. There's lots of rules still that you're going to have maintain in the house. You're not going to give up on all of those. But what you're saying is, this is the big juicy problem. This is the one that drives me nuts. This is the one that makes me go gray more and faster than anything else. And I need to change this rule if I can. And so we're going to work on that. Plus, you build momentum because as you take care of that issue, then other issues kind of start falling down much quicker because now you start getting success and the big thing is not so overwhelming to you. So these ideas of rewarding other or opposite behavior, the fancy clinical term is called differential reinforcement of other behavior or incompatible behavior. And in the, in the behavioral arena, it's a huge, powerful shaping tool for behavior. Now, the third reason that this chart is better it's because the parents stay in control and the rewards. And this is going to answer that question about the yelling. Only the parent can decide when the child gets the reward for an other or opposite behavior. The child cannot decide. Because this is one of the biggest faults of behavior charts. I have to clean my room. And so I go and I pick something up and I say, give me something. Or I will... Um, clean up the dishes, but then I put up my hand and I want something for it. And there's always a sense of that the entitlement that they have to be paid for or rewarded for any good behavior. The idea of just contributing is not enough. This is why we start off first with the core values. We just do these things because these are the things to do as a family. We're honest, we're respectful, we contribute, we communicate, we use our words. Now, so if a child, you may decide, I'm going to give a child a reward for this behavior, and then they stick their hand out, immediately do not give them a reward. <coughs> they can never demand and get the reward when they demand it. Because what that does is it reinforces the idea that I can manipulate to get this behavior, this reward. Now, the reason that this is even more powerful is it uses a variable reinforcement schedule. So a fixed reinforcement schedule is that every time a child does something, the way I ask them to do it, they get a reward. A variable is sometimes you get it, and sometimes you don't. You get to decide when that is. So let's say that I have a reward on me for not hitting. So I'm playing Legos. I could get a reward, not if I demand it. Hey, I'm not hitting, can I get a reward? No, but I love it that you're not, love that you're not hitting. You're awesome, you're amazing, keep it up. Or I could decide to give them a reward, but not if they ask. I can decide to give them if I want to. The reason is the child never knows when it's coming. 
And when a child doesn't know it's coming, that's when the fourth and final reason why this chart is better is that it uses brain science. Because we have a reward network in our brain that's responsible for motivation. It's what tends to make us go back to do things over and over again because it's pleasurable, because we expect a reward or the anticipation of a reward. It's one of the reasons gambling is such a high reward for people, because you never know when you pull that lever if you're going to get something. You might, and it could be big, so you've got to keep trying, you've got to keep trying, you've got to keep trying. That's why video games are so reinforcing to children, because there's constant rewards being given all the time, and they never know when it's coming, but they can come any time. And they're always looking for more rewards, more rewards. And this actually is not a damaging thing for children to have. And it's a natural reward system within the brain. It starts in that middle brain area of the brain where the amygdala is and the learning system, that emotional center in the brain. And it sends dopamine, which is the pleasure chemical in our brain. When we, a dopamine is released, we feel pleasure. And that gets sent then to the forebrain. The forebrain registers it as uh, um, a reward that just occurred. And then that part of the brain then sends a signal back into the middle of the brain to connect with the learning systems and the memory systems to say, hey, store this, I, this behavior as a way to get a reward. And so next time the reward happens, the emotional center of the brain sends a signal and there's a constant reward system that's happening within the brain. Research study shows that when we have uh, positive motivation and dopamine being secreted like achieving a goal and working towards a goal and getting rewards um, over time, particularly on a variable system where we don't always get it every time, that it actually has an impact on improved motivation, motivation, improved memory, cognition, attention, sleep, mood, and learning. There's a lot of huge benefits to directly impact the brain by utilizing the brain's reward, natural reward system. If we get it every single time, we get bored and we don't want it anymore. Because now the reward system shuts down and says it's not enough. Or it's no longer exciting to me. So you can use the reward with the children to help them be motivated. It's one of the common complaints I hear, motivation. Get them motivated towards a goal. Again, the key to this piece though is that you reward only when you decide and they are not engaging in that behavior. So should you even let them know that there's going to be a reward coming? Or sure. They just don't, they know a reward's coming. Yeah. They get it once and they kind of figure it out already. And you can tell them. It actually probably increases the, the orientation towards it and the attention getting. Orientation response and anticipation of something has a profound influence on the development of the prefrontal orbital area of the brain, those executive functioning skills. That's why oftentimes they shut down because organizing a uh, chart for work or for a school is not interesting. It's not motivating. And they don't do it. But they can organize how to win a, a big boss on a video game without any problem whatsoever. Or some other activity that they find motivating. It's all about the motivation. So rather than getting frustrated is that you can try to harness that by rewarding, again, anything that's other than the incompatible behavior. If you're rewarding towards a certain goal, kids will lose interest in it and give up on it too because their own internal working model of fail, sense of failure will come into play and it'll sabotage it. But when you do it this way, their brain doesn't register that as a negative thing. It's a positive thing. But again, they never know what's going to happen. It is seeking attention. And you can dramatically change that by looking and catching them doing good things. But if a lot of us, we have trouble because one, we're exhausted, and two, they're not doing very many good things. But incompatible behavior, even if you're just sitting for a moment playing Legos, that's a good thing because it's not hitting or whatever else we're trying to reinforce. So then you give a token, you can give a check mark, you can give a, um, a gold star, whatever it might, you might want to use. So I've included a couple examples of some behavior charts, one for girls, one for boys. You can use whatever you want on here. And basically, this doesn't have any fancy systems of brush teeth, get dressed, put on shoes, smile nicely. It doesn't have any of those things over here going on. Because you're only focusing on how many things? One. And what you're doing is you basically want them to get to the end. When they get to the end, the big reward happens. That's the big boss of the video game. That's the one they're going to finish. But all along the way, there's going to be opportunities for rewards. Every time they get on 
A circle is whenever you've rewarded them for doing it. Now they may have done it 20 times today, but you only got four checked off because that's the time that you decided to reward them. And they're going to want more. They say, oh, I did it 20 times. Say, that's awesome. That's great. Let's see if we can do it 25 times. Maybe we'll get even more stars. You're not going to let anything deter you from where you're going with them. And now every once in a while, you can spring in a little extra surprise. Again, you want to keep them motivated by, because now they don't know, if I just said don't hit, then they're, or if I said, uh, not, not don't hit, if I said be nice, they're going to be like, oh, here's my sister, give me a reward. And it's like, no, I'm not going to give you a reward for that. But they, not hitting, what does that mean? They got to do a lot of good things. And that can be a lot of different choices, not just be nice to your sister. Yes? Um, in prior experiences, I guess, mm-hmm. or whatever, um, they have encouraged us to start out with high uh, frequency of, of mm-hmm. reward. Is that something that you're still of the mind is beneficial? Yeah. Onset? Yeah, high. Yeah, that's fine. They're usually, though, they're talking about achieving toward a goal versus avoiding incompatible or other behavior. My only concern with that is that it's variable. You can't make it fixed and predictable. So if you're going to give 20 uh, rewards today, that's your goal, then you have to do it when you decide, not when the child decides. And they can't know when it's going to come. It has to come because you decided on your own. That's incompatible or other behavior. So they always have to be on their best behavior. You can then de- <coughs> decrease those over time because hopefully that, will, that skill will what we call generalize and they will um, no longer need to be reinforced because hitting is no longer a problem. And what you do there is then you go to the next juicy, big juicy problem. Okay, now we're not dealing with hitting. Now we're doing maybe disrespect. Now we're doing clean our room or um, not make a mess. So anytime they're not making a mess, they get a reward. Every time we, you know, talk, uh, anytime we're not being disrespectful, and respect can be a lot of things, then we, we get a reward. So you just keep moving down the line with things. And if they go back to the big juicy problem, which was hitting, then you just go back to that one again. But they will get the picture very quickly, because again, they have to be on their best behavior all the time. So yeah, you can titrate them down. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Yes. No, no. Good question. Yeah. The big juicy problem is where it starts hitting. Okay. Every circle is not hitting when you decide to reinforce it. So three times today, I did not hit. Therefore, I got a reward when you decided. Tomorrow, maybe I got four. Next day, maybe I got one. You know, so a lot's going to depend on various, how your day goes, whether you're around them, that kind of stuff. And you give them a lot of rewards. And hopefully they get there very quickly. I mean, they could get here very fast. And then they get a bigger reward. So you have to like draw it out for a little bit. You don't want to be giving constant reward all the time. Then again, that will satiate them and they will stop. It won't have the power of shaping um, so, but you can vary how it goes. And it could be a check mark, it could be a sticker, it could be a star, they can write um, a smiley face in there, they can do, you can do whatever way you want to. And you can make a longer one, you can make it, you know, 30 of these for 30 days or something. But you're going to probably, this will probably take maybe a few days to go through it. Wouldn't it be nice to get rid of a big juicy problem in just a couple of days? I mean, if that's all you could needed to do and you were done, then that'd be awesome, you move to another one. So hopefully those will multiply fast. And again, each one makes it easier and faster as you go along. Questions on any of those?